Here's an explanation of the hydronic stove for the seed eco home. Here you use firewood, we heat, it, heat the water up, we get comfortable heat through the floor, so this is not like a space heater which just radiates throughout the house. We're using water as the heat exchange medium and we're sending that through the PEX tubes under the floor, no cold feet, very comfortable heat throughout the day. We have wood heat and a heat exchanger on top. The sides of the chamber here are actually lined with our compressed earth blocks. You see the compressed earth blocks throughout to keep the sides of the stove from burning out. This is just 8-inch steel. Uh, that heat would burn us out in a year or so, so using block keeps that temperature down, protects the stove. Use a blower here, or just passive. A blower, or instead of the blower, use a, use a pellet burner so that you can run either on fuel wood or pellet burning operation. So dual fuel stove. Made of 16 black one inch pipes. So these are the pipes here. You can see them out the back there, 16 total. And we use pipe fittings to connect them together. It was rather tricky to get them plenty of leaks. We actually used uh, epoxy. You can see some of these are epoxy like, like there. But the idea is that we would really recommend using pipe dope and thread tape so you get a really nice tight fit. And we left the ends outside for serviceability to fix things like leaks. And you notice also the, the fittings are outside, they're not in the flame. Now let's take a look at the, the way the, the pipes enter the stove. We've got this kind of a collar here, and then this is rock wool so that you prevent the smoke from the holes that are in the, in the stove from coming out. So rock wool insulation. On the, on the front and the back. So if you see the front, that's also rock wool. And that's keeping it airtight so that there's no smoke coming out. Uh, 16 sections of pipe means about 16 square feet of heat exchange area, about 200,000 BTU. What we're doing right now is using four circuits. So the main, main circuits here are those four that are going to the floor. So, so forward and return lines, 300 feet each. So 1,200 feet total of PEX half inch tubing under the floor of main floor of the house. The hydronic panel is responsible for controlling the water flow to the floor under the floor heat for the house. So mainly you've got the pump. The pump is on a return side. It pumps the, the water through the heat exchanger, then it gets hot through the exchanger and it goes to the forward line, which is on the right hand side here. Now you see we've got a lot of these nice blue um, outlets with levers. They're very convenient for attaching any amount of circuits that you like. We have an extra space here for some few more things. So overall we've got the fill line, that's one entry. The main is the four lines going to the house. We've got one, one exit for the, the pressure temperature gauge. We've got more allowance here for, here's the temperature gauge which will bypass if you get too hot or the pressure gets too high in the system for safety. Uh, we've got another exit here that's not being used and these are actually going to go either to a hot water storage tank or the thermoelectric generator. So right now the pump is pumping here. To start the system you fill the system with water, here's a fill valve, and then check for leaks, get the, all the air out. The air is purged out when you're, when you're filling. Uh, this is actually our air purge on the forward line, so we can just open that up to let air out. But the, the valve, the priming procedure is very tricky actually, and this valve here is pretty much indispensable. What you do is you lift this pin, and what that does is normally when the pin is down, we are at about 12 PSI for the system. When you lift it up, you're filling it with street, street pressure or whatever you've got coming in as the supply line here. That's our supply line, but which is about 45 PSI. Upon priming, you want that to be at the high pressure. It's just easier for the pump to circulate all the water and get all the air bubbles out of the system. And what you'll hear is that once, once all the air bubbles are out, the pump will get really quiet like right now. That's the arrow on the top is the pressure showing about 12 PSI. The bottom arrow there is temperature. Now you see our system here, that, temp that temperature pressure gauge is off to the side of the system. That's the forward line here. 
while it will read pressure correctly because it's it's got it's a little bit out of the mainstream of the water it's basically touching the water water stream it's not really sensing the full temperature uh, of the system so right now for example we're reading only like about a hundred Fahrenheit it's probably more like 130 140 here we have one outlet that's a, just a purge line and this one here cleaning of the system the system builds up scale over time and we can circulate by using this and another outlet on another side here this is easy quick connect with uh, just a hose coupling but we can circulate uh, just basically close the loop around the heat exchanger and circulate vinegar and that will descale your system so you want to descale it every so often so that you get a get better heat exchange okay another exit here so this exit actually goes to an expansion tank the function of the expansion tank is to hold the extra water when the water here expands with heat. The idea here is that if we have five gallons of water inside the heat exchanger, maybe another five gallons under the floor in the, in the tubing, when you heat the water by about 100 degrees from room temperature to about 160, you will do thermal expansion about 1% by volume for that amount based on a thermal expansion of water. And that means about 500 milliliters, about a pint of extra water. The expansion tank allows the water to be captured without leaking out of the system. Unused channels, these two here, will actually go to the biodigester, which needs heating for the winter and for the summer. You want to keep the biodigester above 90 Fahrenheit. So we're going to use the hydronic heating to heat that right off the hydronic panel. The stove has much more power than we're currently using. We are not using a blower, and it's actually very easy for the pressure relief to trigger when we fill the, wood, the stove with wood. So we're, typically what we run with just like half the stove or, or less because we just have so much power. For example, today it's five degrees outside and inside we keep it like 66 or so. When it was sunny today, it went up to 72 inside or more like 85 inside when it was sunny. Uh, major lesson though, so one thing that we would do is uh, we noticed that in about three hours from the time the stove goes out, the, the house gets pretty cold. In the last house we put in about four cubic yards, about 10,000 pounds or so um, of sand under the floor and that, that can retain the heat much longer for about a day or so. So that, that's a major learning to keep the thermal mass inside the floor put sand right with the hydronic tubing, which we didn't do this time around. That would be a great addition for next time. So the future work right now is to add the pellet burner, add the hyd hydronic heating to the biodigesters, and then experiment both hot water storage and the, th <coughs> and the thermoelectric generator. So thanks for watching and more updates soon.